Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I am going to be taking you through a day's worth of Valentine's Day themed foods or meals. So to start, we are going to be making some little heart-shaped waffles. So I'm using some pancake mix that I especially love. We always buy it at Winco and I have no idea how to pronounce it. I will put the name up on the screen, but it is like one of the yummiest pancake mixes ever. So I'm using that in this little waffle maker that I picked up from Target a year ago. I did make these waffles for Aubrey on Valentine's Day last year. It is a kind of a bummer that you can only make one at a time, but they turn out cute. So in my opinion, it is so worth it. And after after I made a bunch of these waffles, I decided to add some strawberries and I cut them, not as I usually do, but because I wanted to make them kind of heart-shaped by cutting a little V off the top. And then I sliced them in half, sprinkled on some chocolate chips, and this was a very yummy breakfast. So moving on, we're gonna be making some heart-shaped pancakes using the same pancake mix. I am going to be using a cookie cutter here and making sure to spray the cookie cutter with cooking spray each time I make a new pancake. If you don't have one, you can always try to freehand it. It won't come out looking as perfect, but it will still be cute. You could also do a round pancake and add chocolate chips in the shape of a heart, but I really love using a cookie cutter. The pancakes came out a lot fluffier, really thin, thick and the edges were super sharp. You just have to make sure to use cooking spray between each use. Moving on, we're gonna be making a little snack or this could be a lunch idea. I had some sliced cheddar cheese and I decided to use a tiny heart-shaped cookie cutter to cut out some little hearts. And then after this, we are going to be cutting up some turkey using the same cookie cutter. And the cool thing about the cheese is if you wanted to, you could use both pieces. You could put the turkey inside like the negative space one to make it a rectangular shape of both cheese and turkey or you can serve just the heart-shaped pieces. I don't mind eating the scraps. I tend to eat a lot of like the leftovers of my kids anyways, so I will not be wasting any of this food. Aubrey especially liked this little Lunchable inspired treat on this day. And I gotta say, I really love this too. I enjoyed snacking on this and it was one of my highlights growing up when I got a Lunchable. Moving on, we are going to be making just some PB&Js, but we are going to be using the larger heart-shaped cookie cutter. And since I have a baby who eats smaller cut up pieces anyways, none of these scraps are put to waste. If you are someone who would throw it away, I would suggest just not doing this at all because it's a, you know, a pretty good amount of the sandwich that gets, you know, pushed aside. Using the same cookie cutter, we are going to be cutting out some quesadilla bites. I am using also my smaller cookie cutter to cut out little heart-shaped quesadillas, and Aubrey really liked eating these. Sometimes she's hesitant to eat just a quesadilla plain, just, you know, served normally, but the hearts definitely made them more appealing. Next up, we are going to be making some fried mac and cheese. So take any boxed mac and cheese, or you can make it yourself, but that's just extra steps that, in my opinion, were unnecessary on this day. Anyways, we're making some white cheddar mac and cheese shells, but after making this, I really think a stronger flavored cheese mac and cheese would probably work even better, although these did turn out delicious. After you cook the package according to the box, we're gonna put it in a parchment papered lined 
casserole dish and stick it in the freezer for at least 30 minutes just to kind of firm up. Then we are going to use our cookie cutter and cut out the mac and cheese in the shape of a heart. You could just do in the future little rectangular pieces or really whatever shape that you want. After the piece is cut out, we're gonna toss it in some flour and just kind of get it well coated. And then we are going to coat it also with an egg mixture and then put that into some panko breadcrumbs. It is worth noting that here, if you notice that the noodles are kind of softer or easier to fall apart, you will want to stick it back in the freezer just to firm up enough so that you can really work with it during this stage. Once your little mac and cheese heart is totally covered with breadcrumbs, we're gonna drop it in some hot oil and fry it just until it gets like a nice golden brown. Then you're gonna take it out and just kind of put it on a paper towel or just something to absorb all the extra oil and it is ready to serve. Like I said at the beginning, I do think that a stronger flavored like cheddar mac and cheese would probably work best with this recipe, but my white cheddar did turn out really yummy as well. And don't worry about those scraps, we fried them up because us adults really don't care what things look like. You can also use cookie cutters to cut out casseroles like my spinach cheese bake, which I have shared the recipe a long time ago on this channel, I will link it above. Let's move on to some kind of desserts or treats. If you have any sprinkles lying around, pour them in a bowl, grab some melting chocolates and melt them according to the package. I did like 30 second intervals until the chocolate would you know, mix up and be nice and smooth. I added the chocolate to a piping bag. If you don't have one, you can use a Ziploc bag and cut off like the smallest little bit of the corner of the piping bag or a Ziploc bag. Then we're gonna take this chocolate and we're gonna pipe on really any design that you want for Valentine's Day I'm gonna be doing some hearts you could use this technique to you know make little numbers for a birthday party as well so this particular treat is very versatile in terms of how you can use it for different celebrations I made some like solid hearts and then I also made some where I just like piped a heart and didn't fill it in and made some little dots I just kind of had a lot of fun with this and I think they turned out really cute. Aubrey also obviously had to sneak some and she really enjoyed them as well. Last up, we are going to be making some heart-shaped bunt cakes, and I will be using a cake in a mug recipe that I have shared in the past, but here is the recipe card in case you want to screenshot it. This recipe is meant for the microwave and if you like really are craving a good chocolate cake. So I figured I'd give it a try since it is a much smaller recipe than making like five or six of these heart-shaped bundt cakes. And I'd like to do a little shout out for my friend Val. She actually gave me this little cake maker for my birthday and it is so adorable, I love it. I think she got it from Target because it's the same brand as my waffle maker that I got from Target. But anyways, in terms of this recipe, I'm also adding a little bit of baking powder and baking soda, I believe a half teaspoon of both, just because we aren't using the microwave and I did want the cake to rise a little bit. I also added in some red food coloring because I wanted it to come out red, although I really should have added more because the final result, as you will see, just kind of comes out brown. Using my little batter, I filled up the cake 
pan thing about three quarters of a way and it comes with this cute little insert that helps you take the cake out like completely it came out nice and clean and then i just topped it with a powdered sugar and milk drizzle you could make frostings and stuff like that but i just wanted something really simple and for aubrey's i topped it off with some pink and red sprinkles this recipe ended up making about two and a half cakes and my mom was there she was able to try it and she said it really reminded her of like a brownie and like kind of like the edge of the brownie because the outer edges of this cake were kind of more crunchy like you would get on the side of the pan for a brownie if you don't have one of these little bundt cake makers or if you don't plan on even going and getting one you can always make this cake in a mug and then top it off with some sprinkles some valentine's day chocolates that we made just before or you know just color some whipped cream pink and put that on top and it will make it a very special and yummy dessert for valentine's day let me know down below in the comments which idea was your favorite and if you plan on trying any of these for Valentine's Day. If you are new here, I would love it if you would stick around and subscribe and check out all of my motherhood content. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you in the next one. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.